Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day. Let's do some oh so fabulous crafting. Stay tuned. So today, this is what we're going to make. I first made this, oh, I think it was Christmas of 2018. I believe it was. And since making it, this is one of the most requested crafts that I get. Some of you who have been with me for a while, remember this. Some of you have even been requesting it month after month after month. And finally, I am going to redo it. You know, it's perfect for holding all types of goodies, all types of things for dad, or the grad, or any male in your life. And, come on guys, it is so stinking cute to boot. It is so easy to make. And so for this video, I'll try to be as concise as possible, but I'm not going to cut out a whole bunch of the normal steps that you'll see me cut out, because I want to make sure that we spend time on this so that you guys can make these in bunches. Let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to show you is the paper that I'm using. This is true denim paper. It is from Die Cuts with a View. I got this from Joann's and I'm trying to show it without having the light from my overhead lights show on this acetate that's on here. But it is called the Premium Stack and it's denim. It is true denim. So when I pull it off, it unravels, but it's been back to paper, cuts like paper, but you can pull it and just have it unravel if that's the look that you want to have. So I purchased this from Joann's in 2018. So whether or not they still have it now, I don't know, but this is a great paper to have in your collection. And on the back of this, they have all of these wonderful um, templates on how to make flowers and the petals. So, in an upcoming video, we are going to make these denim flowers because I think that they are just absolutely delightful. But today, we're focused on that box. So, in total, we are going to be using three pieces of 12 by 12 paper. I have my denim, then I have a piece of cardstock that I have run through my sticker maker, and it's 12 by 12, and I put the adhesive on the back. And then I have the piece that I'll be using for the box. And then we have a piece that is six by six, and that will line the inside top of the box. And then I have a whole bunch of little strips. So the biggest piece that I have is a three quarter of an inch by eight inch strip. And then I have a three quarter of an inch by three inch strip. And then I have these two little narrow strips here, and they're half an inch each and they're about three inches long. Then I have just a little piece that I cut out from scrap to make my pocket, and then a little piece that I cut out from scrap to make the top part of that pocket. And then I have four pieces that are three quarters of an inch by five and a half that I'll be using to reinforce my box. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to peel off my 12 by 12 piece from the sticker backing and you can see that I've got my sticker adhesive all over this and so I am going to try to get this placed down end to end as straight as I can won't be perfect but it'll be close enough and so now I'll flip it over use my finger blade and I am going to trim off the excess paper here the overhang. So now basically what I've done is I have covered a piece of regular weight cardstock in my denim paper. So now I'll bring in my scoreboard and I am going to score this at half an inch and at three on all four sides.
Okay, so once we have it scored, we are just going to fold and burnish those scores just as we naturally would. And basically, I gave myself a much sturdier surface to work with because the denim paper, although it's 12 by 12, it is very flimsy and you can make a nice denim bag with it, but it's not strong enough to make a box unless you back it. All right, guys, so once we have the scores folded and burnished, we are going to remove some pieces. So we'll need to remove this piece, this piece, and this piece from all four sides. So I will go up to that second score mark, drag down, and I can angle in on this side. And then I'll go ahead and go over to this score mark, drag down, angling in at the same time. And then I'll remove these two pieces. And then to remove this piece, I am simply going to reduce that in size. So let's do it again over here. Go up to the second score mark, drag down, and we freed up our flap. And then I'll angle in on the tab. And I'll angle in over here. And then I'll angle in here. And I've removed that completely. And then I will simply cut that in half, almost. So you can see that this is what we have. We do it on the other side as well. All right guys, so I have all of my tabs cut out and I wanted to show you something really quick. Because I knew I would be cutting through this denim as well as the paper, I wanted to make sure that I had the sharpest blade possible. And I get a lot of questions about what blade do I use in my um, finger blade. I use a size number 11 and I'll open it up. They last a very long time. You get 100 in here and I probably have about 85 to 90 left because I'm able to use these blades for a very, very long time. So since I was changing the blade, I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys exactly what it is that I use. And I will have a link in the description box so that if you want to pick up some of these, you can. If not, just make sure that when you're buying a blade, it's a number 11. So now I am just going to go back and just really crease those tabs because we've got a little thickness here. And now I'll use my glue and I am going to place glue on this denim. And the glue does very quickly try to sink inside of the denim. So we want to go ahead and get it matched and we're going to bring it up and get it as tight and crisp as we can. Then let's use our bone folder, get that stuck down. And we really need to give this a good chance to dry. So I'm going to show you something a little different from what I normally do. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one up and get it matched. And I will go ahead and go on the inside and get this stuck down. Now usually what I'll do is I will go ahead and put the whole box together before I fold my flaps back, glue them, and then fold them in. But because I need to make sure that everything is gonna stay nice and stuck because that denim truly does soak up the glue, I am going to go ahead and fold over this glue flap now so that it can catch those two pieces, those two tabs that I just laid down. It'll go ahead and grab those and hold them in place. The Reptile Glue does an excellent job of holding our project together, but I am putting it together in this way because of how much this material soaks up the glue. I want to make sure that when I fold over, I have got it all snapped into place and nothing will come undone. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I am going to go ahead and just place my glue on my tab. I'm going to go ahead and just place it on this one as well. So I am going to just take this, bring it up, 
and I'll go ahead and just bring this one up as well. I'm gonna spread that glue out just a little bit. So then I'll place them both down. I'll use my bone folder to just start the sticking. Make sure that I've got it nice and neat. And then I'll place glue on that flap. And then I can fold it in and get it stuck down. And now we can take the other side, we can take these other two flaps, place glue, and fold them in. So once we have our sides folded in, we have the base of our box. Now if you want, you could put a chipboard base in here if you're going to be putting anything of weight. Otherwise, leave it as it is. And for the lid, I misspoke. I said we're going to need a 12 by 12 piece. We don't. We need a 10 and 1 8 by 10 and 1 8 inch piece. So we are going to take that 10 and 1 8 by 10 and 1 8 inch piece and we are going to score this at 1 and at 2 on all four sides. And then we need to fold and burnish all of our scores. And I am just in love with this plaid paper in case you guys haven't noticed. I have been using it a lot. Okay, so it's going to be very hard to see, but we're going to have three corner pieces that we need to get rid of. So we'll have a corner piece here, here, and here that we need to remove. Okay, so we are going to go up to our second score mark, which is right here, and drag down. And just like before, we're going to angle in then we'll come over to this score mark, angle in, and then we'll remove that piece, and then we can remove this piece. We'll do it on the other side as well. So we'll go up to our second score mark, drag down to free up the tab, angle in, and then do it on this side as well. And now we just remove this piece. Okay, so once we have all of our tabs cut out, we're going to do something a little bit differently. So I am going to take these strips and just place them inside of my box. And I'm not using chipboard, so just placing these will give me a little bit of added stability on the inside of the box. And then I'm going to do something that I don't think you guys have ever seen me do. I am going to use a glue stick. And it's amazing what you can find when you start cleaning up and de-stashing. And I found glue sticks that I bought before I even started my YouTube channel. And here they are. I really do like these. And I was surprised that they still have a good stick on them. One of the things that I do like about these is that when you're done using it, you can just place it back inside and it's got this little tray at the bottom that just grabs it. So when you turn it upside down, your glue sticks don't fall out. But I'm going to pull this one back out because we are going to use it. Um, I don't use glue sticks very often, but when I do, I want it to be a very good glue stick and this absolutely is. So I am just going to take glue place it on the backs of these, and then I am going to stick them down inside of the second panel, not this one, but this one. And then I'll take my bone folder and just help that to make sure that it's going to stay stuck. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with how these manage to stay moist as well as to maintain the ability to stick after almost two years or more. So I've got that down. Then I'm going to stick this down. So now that we have it stuck like this, I am going to just take the glue stick and place glue on my tabs. 
I could use my reptile glue for this, but I'm just doing it this way, this time for demonstration purposes. And there, so we've got our box put together. I am just going to put the lid back on this because I don't know if I'll be using it anymore today. So now that we have it like this, I am going to place my reptile glue on this and use reptile glue to close this because it'll also harden and help to make that just a little bit harder. Okay, so we've got the last one stuck down and I am just going to go around on this just to make sure it's nice and crisp. And you can see that my sides are very sturdy. So now it's time for what I like to call the moment of truth. We put our lid on and as you can see, we have a very good snug fit on this. Okay guys, so now we get to decorate this and I actually forgot about the jean portion of the top. And this piece measures two and a half by 10. We'll need to do some trimming, but this is what we start with. Okay, so I have placed some double stick tape on the back of my two and three quarters by 10 inch piece. And I am just going to place it down right here at the bottom. So that's creating my jeans. And then I'll just fold that over, get it nice and tight, fold it over on this side, get it nice and tight. I'm going to use my bone folder just to make sure I've got a good stick on this. And then I will use my scissors to trim off the excess. Okay, so once we have the bottom on, it's just easier for me to work with the lid on the box because it elevates it just a little bit and just makes it a little easier. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to start working on the belt. So I have that eight inch strip and all I'm doing is just adding some holes using my hole puncher. And then I am going to take my Distress Ink and this grungy old Dollar Tree sponge that I've cut up and I am just going to dirty this up just a little bit just to make it look like an old worn belt and so now I can take this and glue it down so I'll use my glue place my glue on the back and I'm going to put this down so that I am overlapping not only the denim portion, but also the plaid portion. So I'm basically joining the two. And then I'll get this stuck down. And because I'm using bunches of scrap on this project, you may see where it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, and that's okay. If you want to cut yours longer, you can, but my piece was eight inches long, and that's what I used for this because I had a scrap piece that was eight inches long. So now I'm going to bring in the three inch piece that is basically going to be the flat part or the belt loop part, and I am going to take this and just cut it at an angle just to kind of make it look like a belt loop just a little bit and it'll lay down like that, but I think I'm going to shorten this just a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this that I did with the other one. I just want to dirty this up just a little bit. And then I am going to punch a hole closer to the front like that. And now that I have that piece, I am going to take my glue, place some glue on this, and stick this down. So initially I was going to use brown as the loops for the belt to go through, but I have these scraps. So I am going to use these instead because I think they flow better with my project. So I am just cutting off pieces that will be as long as I want them to be and that'll totally be up to you. And I'm going to place them down just like that. And what I like is that these have that frayed look to them. So I am going to take these 
and glue them down. So I'll place some glue on these and I'm going to stick them down. You can make yours as long or as short as you want them to be. Completely up to you. And then I'll take this one, put it in the middle. And now you can see it looks like our belt is going through the loops. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to dirty all of this up because jeans are never pristine and we need for this not to look so shiny. So I am just taking my ink and I am just rubbing it to give this that worn out denim look. There, so that knocked a whole bunch of that shine off of this. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add some stitching. So all I'm doing is taking a dark marker and I am simply going to freehand some lines all the way down. How you choose to do it, completely up to you. But I'm just adding some freehand stitching And so we have that part. And then all I'm going to do is then come around here and add some stitching to create a pocket. And then I'll add a double row And then I'll just go back and darken these just to make sure that they stay and don't sink into the actual denim here. And I'm going to do the other side and then I'll be right back. All right, so here we are. And isn't this just such fun? I'm absolutely loving these boxes, always have. So I am going to take two brads so that I can give myself a little rivet look. So I am going to take my rivet and place it right there at the end of that stitching and I am basically just punching a hole right in here. So I'm going to hold this, get my hole punched, then I'll take my gold mini brad, put it right there, And I'll come back and open that up and I'll do the same thing over here so you can see that it's the little things that we do sometimes that make the biggest difference and you can already see how adding that little brad just really turned this into a more authentic looking pair of jeans and flannel shirt so now we are going to add our pocket so to get my pocket all I did was I took some scrap denim that I had, denim paper, and I simply just trimmed it into a shape that I liked. And so now what I'm going to do is very close to the edge of this pocket, I am going to add some stitching. And like I said, I'm placing this stitching very close to the edge. And so hopefully you guys can see that. I have got that stitching on and my pocket's going to go right there but before I place the top pocket down, I want to place a little topper. So I have a piece that is about half an inch by three, and I don't need for it to be that long, but that's just what I had left in my scrap. So I'm simply going to fold that in half. Add some glue. And then I'll take my pocket and I'm just going to sandwich it inside of this piece that I just cut. And that's just giving me a topper to my um, pocket. That's all. And I'll cut off my excess paper. 
And now I'm going to take my glue, place some glue along the edges because you can actually put a very small tag in here. And I'm going to take this and place it down. Try to get it straight. And you can see what a little cutie that is. And so to finish this off, I have two buttons and I am going to place some glue on these and just get them stuck down. So now as you can see, we have another fun little box that's perfect for dad. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to take my six by six piece. I am simply going to place some glue on this. And I am going to stick it down inside of my box. This is going to cover those brads. Use my ruler to get everything stuck down. So now you can't even see those brads at all. And we have another fun little box. And if you want to open this up so that you can place something inside, just take a piece of paper, start putting it in and just pushing it up. And that way you'll create some opening in that pocket. So if you wanted to tuck something on the inside, you could. Perfect for a little card or a little tag. It'll be a teeny tiny, but it'll be perfect. So I am going to bring the other one back in so you guys can see what fun these projects are and how easy they are to make. Doesn't this make a little statement? Wouldn't dad be happy to get this box? Wouldn't any guy that you know be happy to get this box? Won't you have fun making these boxes? Of course you will. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.